He is the boy with the golden boots, Sonny Pike, age 10. 12-year-old Sonny Pike from Enfield, whose own football skills are internationally recognised. He wants to go to Holland to learn his football, and he might just get his way. Ajax came, when I came back, the media side of it just went through the roof. Now, he's still only 13 years old, and he's got every football, football club in the country knocking at his door, wanting to sign him up. Now, I just felt under pressure, and I remember just literally just walking off the pitch. I was on trial at that point. I literally just started walking off the pitch diagonally. I was just like, just let me go. There's a saying that it's like pressure burst pipe sort of thing. So if you sort of store in that in your brain that like all these pressures all the time and not talking about it and releasing it, if it help, if it's helping other people, then I'm gonna carry on doing it. Luke Pike, better known to the world as Sonny, was born and raised in the North London borough of Enfield. While he became known for his skills as an outfield player, he actually started his footballing life as a goalkeeper. I was playing for Enfield Colts. And I was like, say, about maybe six years old, five, six years old. Played a few games in goal, and then I realised I'm literally on about two games. And I was just like to my dad, <laughs> I don't like it in goal. When did you first realise I'm actually pretty good at this? Probably like say ten years old, something like that. And I realised I was scoring most more goals than most people, sort of thing. And I had uh, quite a knack for it. I remember playing one game. We played, I think, a team called Jaguar, and we I think we won. 14-2 and I scored like 13 of the goals or something like that. That's the first ever Disney magazine ever coming to the country and I was in that somewhere. Yeah, my... Cos Disney are big football fans. Yeah, they're massive, yeah. <laughs> there we go. What's it like going through this stuff when you do? Um, I don't really go, go through it that much but uh... Yeah, no, I, I, I look at it quite positive. I'm not quite right about it now, but for a while, they stayed locked away and, and they were actually, they weren't even in here. They was in my mum's loft, stuck in a box in the middle of nowhere and they didn't get looked at for about 15 years or something like that. When did Ajax first become, when was it first mentioned as an option for you? We'd, I'd been out to Holland with my local club, Enfield, and there was... Uh, Something mentioned to me about me going out there for a trial. I think I was 12 years old, and uh, he said, "Would you like to do it?" And I thought, "Yeah, why not?" 22 years after his time with Ajax, Sonny went back to Amsterdam to reminisce about his time at the academy. Ajax have since moved to their new home to Torkemst, and there to welcome him as he arrived was club legend and a former teammate of Johan Cruyff's, Shark Svart. Hello, sir. You're right. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you good? No, no, not so, none of it. <laughs> but you look always to Ajax or not? Yeah, yeah, all the time, all the time. See that there, guy there, his name's Tom Pronk. He was, when I come here, he took me uh, sort of under his wing, give me a place to stay. I'm just, I'm just trying to think if it was this, I think it's this side. This side was the first team when I got here, yeah, look. De Boer, Overmars, Nippmann, Rijkaard, Blind. Davids, look at the young Davids there, Canu. Were you able to kind of take that stuff in at the time? No, at the time I think because it was all, so, everything was so quick. It's only like, to be fair, the more I've done over the last two years, 18 months when I've been talking about it because I, sp I spent a lot of time and I shut the door on a lot of it and I never even spoke about football for a long period. I think over the last two years when I've been talking about it and more things, I've, 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 I've got to enjoy it in a way more now because at that point it was so quick. But don't get me wrong, I did enjoy it, but uh, taking it in, in in that type of sense is a bit different. Processing so many life-changing experiences in a short space of time is a lot to ask of a 12-year-old, but it isn't long before the memories start coming back. Being in the cafe, I remember one time, I was having a cup of tea and Van Gaal came over and gave me some biscuits. And I was looking and I was just like, I looked up and my dad don't nothing about football. He said, like, who's that? I said, like, that's the first team manager. I was like, well excited sort of thing. And... <laughs> You know the ones that come in a little packet, uh, just that little tiny ones, little okay. balbony type things like that. And I just never looked. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking. I remember looking at him and just opened him up. I thought, yeah, I have some. <laughs> Sonny had the option to sign with Ajax full time, but decided to stay in the UK. While on the books at Leighton Orient, a dream move to one of the country's top clubs presented itself. I was on my way. To, I was going to play for sign for Chelsea, and uh, there was a lot, sort of, lot went on with a documentary that was made about me. In May 1996, Channel 4 aired the documentary Coaching and Poaching as part of their Fair Game series and was presented by former FA chairman Greg Dyke. The piece was intended to show the power big clubs could wield over smaller clubs. 
As a result, Sonny was banned from playing for a year. I was in total shock. Uh, I remember actually watching it and just thinking, <clears throat> in a pub I was watching it with my old coach Terry. I remember coming out and just thinking, sort of bemused sort of thing. I actually walked out into the middle of the street into a roundabout and I was looking around and I was just like, wow, what's, just, what's gone on here? That was tough because I took a big blow and mentally I never really recovered. To get away from the limelight, Sonny went to play for local side Loughton. Eventually, big clubs came calling again, with trials at QPR and Crystal Palace. But during a practice match for Palace against Tottenham Hotspur, it all became too much. I pride myself on technique and my touch being good. And the ball come, and it come to me, I went to and it was like literally just opt over my foot, like silly little things. And to be honest with you, the people who watch it probably wouldn't have thought nothing of it. But to me, all of a sudden it blew up into a massive big deal. And I had a few touches and I felt under pressure. And I remember just literally just walking off the pitch. And I was on trial at that point. So I, was, I should have been really trying my best. I literally just started walking off the pitch diagonally. Uh, I never even said I was injured or nothing like that. And I just remember walking off the pitch and I was just like that. I was just looking, the coach was looking at me, obviously, what am I doing? I was just like that. I was just like that, just let me go. And uh, I just walked off and got and went, sh went straight in the changing room and sat there to myself and thought, like, what was going on? But uh, it's, it's tough. It's tough because oh, I can still fucking feel it now, to be honest with you. So after that, I mean, what, what did the coach say when you came back in? Did he... I don't think they understood. I don't think they understood. I think because it was that sort of a lot of it was building up in my own head. Uh, they couldn't understand. No, it's hard to understand. It's, that's the thing when you're struggling mentally. Is you can uh, you can't see it. If I would have gone over on the pitch with a dodgy ankle or a broken leg, that would have been thing. But if I was struggling, I was struggling upstairs, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? So when I went back, they listen. They might. I don't know what they thought to be honest with you. That was the last game I played, and I think I stopped playing for a few months. But I just wanted to feel normal. I didn't want to be known as like that kid anymore, do you know what I mean? I just wanted to feel normal and sort of just mix in with the boys. I'd say the, 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 the game changed with me was my little girl, when my little girl Freya was born. You know, it literally just like a switch. I was just like, wow. I held on to her in, in, in the hospital and I looked at her and I thought, right, you've got to pull your finger out here now. So that's when I decided, I thought, oh, I'm going to do the knowledge. I've got my own job, I've got security sort of thing. And, uh, and I've noticed the more I've been talking, uh, the easiest made me feel sort of thing and it's making me enjoy football a lot more. I'm watching a lot more football than what I used to. Having reached a stage where he feels comfortable to talk about his life, Sonny is now working on an autobiography that he plans to release next year. When you look at it now, I, try, I tend to look at trying to look at the positives in everything I'm doing and, and I look back at it as a kid and I think, listen, I had some great experiences and, and done some things that kids will never do and uh, I'll try and use that as a positive thing now to try and uh, like, even help other kids that might be going through pressures at clubs or this, that and the other. And if, I'm, and if they can see uh, me looking back at it now and, and taking a positive from it, and I think that can only help. But uh, it, 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 it's mad because I get noticed as this like the, the long-haired kid from the 90s. Oh, I remember you from McDonald's. Oh, I remember you from fantasy football. And people come up to me and say, oh, I remember you for this. And I think if you only knew of all the other things as well, sort of thing. <laughs> 